everybody and welcome to Change Bible Study. As we've been studying this week, we've seen the implication of sin. But I really do hope that in understanding more of the mess that we're in, you get a real understanding for just how deep God's love and Christ's salvation and the Holy Spirit's presence is for each of us. So let's wrap it up this week as we pray that, Lord, indeed, you will help us to see how sin is rebellion. But in Christ, we have the exact opposite, and that's oneness with you. And this is our prayer. We pray it in your name. Amen. All the way from the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 3, what is understood as the fall of man. In Genesis chapter 3, beginning there in verse number 1, the Bible records the story that the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, you know, sometimes when we think about uh, Adam, we think about Eve, we think about the Garden of Eden, we just think to ourselves, oh man, how could they do something so foolish? Or we may even say, well, wow, if that were me, surely I wouldn't have given up everything that I saw for just one fruit out of all the millions that God had made for me. But can we really answer that question that way honestly? Can we really say that we would not have fallen? See, when we understand that sin was not just a fall and Adam and Eve, but understand that it was a, a universal um, derailing of the unity that God had made. It went from being an atmosphere of peace to an atmosphere of rebellion. Go to another verse with me. Look at Isaiah chapter 14. From the very beginning, the father of sin, the father of lies, the father of murdering, of course, that being Lucifer, now known as Satan, the Bible says in Isaiah 14 and beginning in verse 12, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You are weakened for the nations. Now again, if you were in the garden, if I were in the garden, would we have partaken of the fruit? What is sin? Look at verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in the mount of the congregation. In other words, I will be God. So at the very core, sin is the opposite of will of love. It's instead of total worship to the Creator, it's total worship to oneself. So in effect, it's saying not Christ, but I. I will exalt myself. I will be like the Most High. I will sit in the mount of the congregation. That is the problem. That is sin at its best and at its worst. Not Christ, but I. So the very answer, which we studied yesterday, and the only answer to this problem can be found in the exact opposite. And that rather than saying, not <laughs> Christ, but I, the saint says, no, 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 not I, but Christ. See, in Revelation chapter 14, and in verse number 12, the Bible declares it this way, by saying in Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. See, the devil came down having great wrath to try to implant in us an attitude of ingratitude. But in the believer and in Christ, we no longer live to ourselves. Remember, that flesh, that old man, that selfishness is crucified so that the spirit now lives in me and I'm able to live the life of Jesus. Friends, let's remember that the heart of sin is not Christ but I. And the answer to peace, the way to finding uh, fulfillment in life and your true purpose is the exact opposite. It's opening up and praying it in your heart as I hope you pray right now with me. Lord, we pray the prayer of the believer, the prayer of the overcomer, the prayer of the Christian is not I but Christ. Christ, we pray that you will live in our heart and that you'll be our one and only, and that you'll be the focus of all that we do, the source of all that we need, and again, the answer of all that we don't know. That's our prayer. And I pray now, dear friend, in the name of Jesus, that you receive this as a promise, to realize that by giving up all control, giving up all obligation, you give now the Creator all power, all authority, and all even obligation to not just take care of you, but even to save you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This is our prayer. We pray it in your name. Amen. God bless you, friend. And until next time, please remember that change 